and uh, just want to test you a little bit as far as what your knowledge, uh, what you hold with your knowledge of the beginnings of the city. Um, I was really surprised to find that um, here we are celebrating the 150th anniversary of the end of the Civil War, and I had people come up to me in the last year and talk about that they thought that during the Civil War we were still part of Fort Snelling. There was nothing here during the Civil War. So really skewed early history of the city when by the Civil War we already had neighborhoods developing within the city around the core city, core downtown central business district of the city. And um, so I, I just wanted to kind of do a recap to see how much you really know and remember and uh, questions that you might have from, from that period, that early period of the city. And how, how many here recognize the earliest structures we have around St. Paul? What are our oldest structures? Anybody? What? Coney, okay, that's a good, that's a good thing. Coney Island, Coney Island building, the oldest commercial building in the downtown section in the back. I can see it. It's Mary Arvanitas' place now, 444 St. Peter. You got it. He knows the address. <laughs> he said, were you a customer for a long time? No, I was a cab dispatcher at Yellow. Aha, uh -huh, so you remember. <laughs> the the cab, I think is still standing. A cab dispatcher no, knew the address as well. Um, Oldest structures in the metro area. Anybody? Oldest structures. Huh? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I didn't. I, I didn't necessarily say buildings. I said structures. <laughs> so Indian mounds. Uh, built structures. Built environment. The built environment. Where's our oldest buildings? Where's the oldest? Huh? Nope. Come on. Think back. Huh? Fort Snelling. Fort Snelling. When we think, okay, Fort Snelling. Secondly, okay, so 1820s, 1820s. Okay, so that's a big jump back. How about next? The next little group of structures. They took you there as kids. Most of us, as baby boomers, they dragged us over there and dragged us through these places. No, 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 no. Houses, buildings, houses. No, no. No. Men, where, who said Mendota? Yes, thank you. Who lived at Mendota? Sibley. Henry Sibley. Henry Sibley. First governor of the state of Minnesota. Henry Sibley. Okay. Fort Snelling. Mendota. Okay. What 1840s buildings? We've got 1820s, 1830s. Sibley House, Faribault House at Mendota, St. Paul, 40s buildings, 1840s. Irvine Park, close, close, no, nope. guess what? About uh, 20 years ago, we tore down a hand-hewn butternut log building that was moved from where our library was to the West 7th neighborhood during the Civil War, and we tore down our last 1840 structure in the city just 20 years ago. Hand-hewn butternut log structure. It's at right where our library is, was, is today, our downtown library, moved in 1862 to Ramsey Street, which is now the lower part of Grand Avenue. Okay, no 40s. Oldest standing house in the city. Where is it? We talked about it on our old St. Paul several times now. One of our subscribers reads old St. Paul, participates. Anybody? Close, close by, near Burger Moe's, almost within sight. No, ice dealer. He sold ice. He cut the ice out of the Mississippi River and sold ice. No, that's uh, little Justice Ramsey house is not the oldest house, but one of the oldest, and that's the one by Burger Moe's. 1850, 234 Ryan. Charles Simmons House, the Charles Simmons House in Irvine Park, uh, right next to the old Cassetta store. How many shopped at the old Cassetta store at Chestnut and Ryan? Okay, just two doors from the Cassetta store is where our oldest standing house 
stands 1850, 1850, to create some context. Look at the big city of Minneapolis across the river, right? Big city of Minneapolis, oldest standing structure in Minneapolis, 1849, Art Godfrey House. Moved four times in its history, now on its fifth site, 1849's Museum House in Richard Chute Square over in northeast Minneapolis, third, near the Third Avenue Bridge. And then um, 1850, John Stevens House moved four times in its history on its fifth site and uh, in Minnehaha Park, Minnehaha Park, two oldest structures in Minneapolis. Okay, so again, Fort Snelling, Mendota, Irvine Park, oldest house, 1850s. We've destroyed, systematically destroyed everything from the decade of the 1840s. That little house that they took down on Ramsey Street, hauled it away to the landfill, I was able to salvage one log, one log, went out to the landfill on a freezing cold day and salvaged a log and gave it to who I thought built the house because they always called it the Scott Campbell House. And indeed, about a year or so ago, I found out that the Rice brothers, Henry and Edmund Rice, built twin houses downtown where the library is, lived in those houses their first years in St. Paul. Later, the Edmund Rice was sold to Scott Campbell. So the Rice Brothers, Rice Street, name four, Rice County, name four, Rice Park, name four, that's whose house we tore down, downtown, originally downtown in the 1840s. Would have predated anything in the Twin Cities by eight years within the corporate cities of Minneapolis and St. Paul by eight years. So preservation, historic preservation, how important. Anyway, so think of St. Paul starting in the 1850s. Where did the city start? Where were our first settlers? Lower town. Who said Fountain Cave? Good, good, good point. Everybody know where Fountain Cave is? Okay. Where's Greg Brick? <laughs> Greg Brick, Greg Brick knows every cave and crevice in the whole metro area and tunnel in the whole metro area. He shared that with uh, much of that information with us in this room the last time we met here. So Fountain Cave, a good a good starting point when we start talking about the city. The foot of Randolph Street, basically Randolph or Randolph. If you drew a straight line where it would meet the river in the West Seventh neighborhood and West End neighborhood of St. Paul old Upper Town neighborhood, the original Upper Town neighborhood of St. Paul. Lower Town, Lower Landing, Lower Steamboat Landing, foot of Jackson Street, Upper Town, Upper Landing, Steamboat Landing, foot of Chestnut Street, two neighborhoods, two original neighborhoods of the city. Upper Town started about St. Peter Street, went all the way up to the brow of Cathedral Hill, what we know as Summit Hill or Cathedral Hill today, extended all the way out to the brewery, out to where Schmidt Brewery is today. All of that upper town, everything else lower town, pretty much. And so two original neighborhoods. Lower town retained its name. Upper town disappeared because the upper landing disappeared. We revived that name and it's still part of the West 7th neighborhood today because we revived that name in the 1980s. Yes? What about Park Place? Park Place. Park Place, okay. Interesting area that was part of our much louder, I'm getting in the back, okay, much louder. Uh, Park Place, a, uh, a separate little fun neighborhood of old Victorian houses up where, very near where our State Historical Society stands today. Uh, developed after, only after, the Park Place Hotel, which was built in the 1860s, burned and uh, replaced by the Victorian houses. And it had a central park surrounded by Victorian houses, uh, part of our landscape up until the 1950s, probably the last house torn down in the early 1960s. And uh, I, I have photographs of all those houses in a collection that was given to me years ago. 
So we can talk about that unique part of the city some more when we get together. Um, anyway, so 1850s, um, squatters and settlers settling on the reserve uh, area of Fort Snelling. The evicted from that settlement in the 1840s pushed beyond the Fort Snelling Reserve into what is now downtown St. Paul. Yeah. Steamboat landings, two places, the upper and lower landings where steamboats could land. Uh, first passenger steamboat came up the river 1823, stopped at Fort Snelling. By 1847, we had a, a, a solid uh, steamboat passenger uh, system in place, and uh, thousands of immigrants pouring in here, most of them Yankees, most of them from the East Coast, replacing French-Canadian settlers for the most part uh, in the 1850s, for, late 40s, early 1850s. So rapid development during that period, Lots of change, lots of building, core downtown area built as a neighborhood. We think of it as a central business district today with business buildings. All of our downtown, basically a large neighborhood. And the commercial strip along what's now Kellogg Boulevard or 3rd Street. And the, most of the rest of the downtown, just a, um, look like a New England community. Something you'd see out east. You're traveling out east through the old colonial towns. And uh, much of that uh, Yankee uh, um, culture was brought here, and so our streets are named just like they are in the east as well. When you look down in Irvine Park, you had Walnut Street, Chestnut Street, Pine Street. Uh, very often you'd have a school street or a church street. We had, we had early interesting simple names like that too in our downtown. Um, so 1850s, rapid development up until 1857. 1857, a national financial panic or crash. Depression starts and uh, all of a sudden things change overnight. All of those real estate prices that were high, uh, fueled by all of this uh, infusion of people into Minnesota and into St. Paul, uh, you have uh, uh, people that now are saying, uh, I really, all of my investments have now uh, uh, probably have been cut in half in value, and some people losing almost everything they own that they had invested in real estate, and the development of our early city, and they decide they're going back east to friends and family. Something really interesting, if you ever look at our 1860 census for Minnesota, look at the city of St. Paul, every other house in that census is vacant. Every other house. They say half the population of our city disappeared almost overnight. In 1857 to 1860 period. In 1861, Civil War. Civil War takes another huge section of our population, sends them off to the south to fight the Civil War. So think of the city getting a really big boost in the 1850s, inflated prices in real estate, core city expanding, upper town neighborhood, which is now the West 7th Street neighborhood, is developing. Cities incorporated in 1854, 1858, we attain our statehood, the 32nd State of the Union, May of 1858, and uh, that 57 crash comes right there and extends all the way up to the time of the Civil War. So a, a tough start, tough start. 